Well, now, what's a PGA credit? PGA stands for uh, Producers Guild of America. It's not a union. It's kind of a membership, but you have to either earn credits, uh, like legitimate credits to get in, or you can be invited. And I was invited to join because uh, the season that I worked on was recognized by the PGA for outstanding producing. You know, the, ti- the titles at the end, like, you know how you have ACE for editors, that's their editing, uh, or uh, DGA, uh, yeah. it's PGA is Producers Guild of America. Yeah. So if you watch some credits at the end and it says PGA, those are PGA producers. Yeah, so it's nice to be able to put that yeah. at the end of your name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Credibility. Oh, that's awesome. Very proud of that one, yes. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. You were a producer on Top Chef then. Okay. I was. Tell us how that uh, happened. By this time in my career, I was PAing, but I was also dabbling into coordinating and other positions. Mm-hmm. And I heard that Top Chef was in town. And I've been a Top Chef fan since season one. So I've, I've loved the show and I heard it was coming to Colorado. I emailed magical elves. I'm like, Hey, I'm, I live in Denver. Can I work like whatever you need? I'd love to work for the show. Never heard back from them. And I was just trying to reach out to people to see, okay, who's, who's doing it. When is it starting? I was trying to get more information. I couldn't find anything. And the very first day it was a Sunday and I went to church. I sing sometimes with my uh, friend at church and I went in to sing that morning, I got a phone call from one of the big time producers at Top Chef. She said, hey, we got your information from a producer friend of ours. We need a PA. Can you come in today? And I'm at church and I'm listening to this voicemail because she called when I was singing. And I was like, absolutely. So I told my friend, I'm like, I'm leaving. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got to go down there. So I worked Sunday through Thursday like the go-getter attitude, the good shoes, the smile, how can I help you? What can I do for you? All that stuff. I mean, the show, the show was a difficult show to work because it just was such like a marathon, but I didn't care. I was so excited because I love the show and I just was going to go for it. And by Thursday, the producer that called me in with her producing partner and they both sat me down, they said, okay, there's an open spot for an associate producer and we'd like to hire you starting tomorrow for an associate producer position. Would you like it? And I'm like, absolutely. (laughs) So I was a PA from Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday I was an associate producer. It just happened literally like that. And all it was, was, I mean, kind of right place, right time, but most of it was having a good attitude, having, having the good shoes on, big smile on your face. How can I help you? Is this your first associate producing job then? That one? That was my second. My first one I did was for a show called The Lifted Life. And that was on the Velocity channel. Um, That one I started as well as a PA. And by the second episode, I think the head producer was recognized me and said, uh, you know, I would like to hire you as an AP. So I then like got all the credits for the AP. But then I was also working as a production manager. I look back on it now and I did a lot of production manager type work on that uh, job. So it was my second one technically, but by that point I had, I still had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. And I told my, my higher up, my producer, I was like, I'm learning, like, you know, tell me what I need to do. And he said something funny back to me. He said, I don't know what the heck I'm doing either. So it just made me realize, wow, like no one knows what they're doing in this industry. It's just fake it till you make it. And you just live and learn and you make mistakes and oh, well, then you move on. Right. So it was a great moment for me to be like, oh, he has no idea what he's doing either. Great. Okay, we're in this together. Let's do it. You just put your head down and you just go for it. <laughs> you betcha. What you just said there is so damn good because it it's, gives us permission to go, hey, I don't have to be perfect. I don't know if I have to ever. We, we, you, you do not have the excuse of having fear hold you back in that case because you everybody's learning on the job. And what, what got her this opportunity? A great attitude. What got her a great attitude was her decision inside of herself to say, I can do this. I want to do this. I can do this. Now notice inside yourself as we listen to Jen, because we're going to start getting to more personal development uh, in these calls now. Notice when you're listening to Jen, if you're thinking like, oh, I can relate to her. I can do it too. Or if you're having thoughts that are saying, oh, wow, she's really something wow, she can do this, but I don't know if I can get to those levels. If you have those thoughts, that is not your friend. Let those thoughts just float through your mind, right, Jen? Let them float through your mind, but just Mm -hmm. don't listen to them. 
don't make yourself wrong for having disempowering thoughts. But once you have awareness of them and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm actually sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, she's so amazing. And she, yeah, she got the opportunity because she's so good looking. She's so smiling. She's so this, you know, she's so bubbly, but this probably wouldn't happen to me. Notice when you have those thoughts, because those are bullshit thoughts mm -hmm. and you pick them out up. They're not even your thoughts, you guys. This is a different kind of concept. These are not your thoughts. These are thoughts that are out there that have been thought millions of years ago, 500 years ago, 100 years ago. Think of them like thoughts that are out there on the airwaves all over the place, millions and millions and millions of thoughts. And you just caught it and brought it into your head and go, oh, she's got it, but I don't have it. And then you made it yours. So mm. it's not yours. <laughs> it's just a freaking thought. So you should not feel shame. You should not feel guilt. You should not feel disempowered. You can choose your thoughts. You can choose which ones you believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what did you, what have you needed to believe your entire career as you've been creating this amazing career? I can do it. I mean, you can see it from what she's done, but tell us in your own words, what did you need to, what did you choose to believe about yourself? I guess quick segue and I'll go right into it. When I lived in Atlanta on these big projects that I was on, I was asking a lot of people, how did you get into the art? How did you get, how did you get in the art department? How did you get into this department? How, you know, how did that work out for you? Just asking a lot of questions. Literally every single person said this to me. They said, you fake it till you make it. And then I had a moment where I realized, wow, no one knows what they're doing. And everyone is literally just trying to figure it out as they go. If you think about it, if you ever watch grips, I love watching grips because they're like, okay, guys, we have a shoestring and then like a light and we need to figure out how to swing it across <laughs> or like whatever. And they just sit there and figure it out. And then they, they mount it all together and then off you go. So no one, no one really knows what they're doing. And I think I took the pressure off of myself of, I have to be perfect. I am a recovering perfectionist. <laughs> 100% mm -hmm. through and through. And I think for me, it's like, oh, okay, Jen, just let go of needing to be perfect. Let go of not wanting to make mistakes. Just let go of that perfectionism because that should not really exist. And then just go for it and try. Was I scared? Hell yeah. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it's like, you know, if I don't go for it, then I'll sit forever with the what if. And I don't ever want to sit there with the what if. So I just, I just went for it. And even though I had a lot of fear, I just said, all right, screw you voice. <laughs> I don't need to hear you. I'm going to go for it. And I just went for it and learned as you go. You know, there's no, there's no re really ever one right way or one wrong way. There's just a lot of different ways to do things. And you learn that a lot when you're doing a lot of coordinating and production management where there are some things, yeah, absolutely. Like this is the right way and this is the wrong way, but they're like, oh, oh, I didn't know you could do that. That was a really great trick. And so even, even though I've been working with people in the industry for 30 years, that have been in the industry for 30 years, I'm still teaching them new things. And obviously I'm learning a lot too. So you're constantly learning, constantly growing. And I think it's just the attitude of like, I can do this. Just let go of that perfectionism, let go of needing to be perfect and just try. As you were uh, on these sets and you started hearing this and you're like, I'm trying to be perfect. And then you're like, wait a minute, I can go so much faster if I don't try to be perfect. Like I can be more free and be more smiley and more happy if I don't have to be perfect. Like I can kind of wing it and do good enough and just count on that I want to do good. I'm, you know, working really hard. I'm just going to count on that that's enough because, well, it seems like that is enough and that's actually plenty and that's actually perfect. Wow. When you're doing acting, there's something that's so magical about letting go of that perfectionism as well. If you want to be an actor, I think the biggest trick is just allowing yourself to shine through the role. And even if you have a moment where you're like, whoa, what was that? That's what's so charming about watching people on camera, just allowing themselves to be vulnerable and allowing themselves to just be present in the moment and not thinking, okay, my next line is this and I need to say it like this, but versus like, okay, I know what my next line is. I'm just gonna sit with my scene partner and just let it happen. So there's something that's very magical about staying present and, and being real and honest and vulnerable. And that also translates not only from acting, but that just translates in life. Because if you try to be perfect, you're just this robot that's just gross. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just want to be yourself and just let go of all that. Let's let go of trying to be perfect. And I, I'm still, I still struggle with that. So it's not like I'm, I've mastered it. But 
The improv part of acting is awesome. You know, even if you don't want to be an actor, I think that you should uh, come on and practice because actors are wiring that part in their brain where they're just like, I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm going to throw it out there. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. And that loosens up the wiring. Like it's, I got to say things a certain way and be perfect.